Welcome back to the Acoustic Shop channel. Today we are going to be introducing the brand new Eastman E2 BK. This gets a dread in an OM. Anyway, we're going to get into all the specs. We're going to let you know what it is, what it sounds like. We'll even give you a I'll actual... Rank it. Yeah, we're going to rank it. That'll be even pretty awesome too. So we'll get into all the details on this guitar. So stick around. It's going to be a whole bunch of fun. I know this was kind of fun for Eastman to do. The E2 was a very, very popular guitar, and still is a very, very popular guitar. Um, they did it in a, in a Dread and an OM, and then they also have the AC122, which is also the same. And basically, they were solid wood guitars, Sapele back and sides, with a cedar top, which was really kind of a unique sound, and uh, I've actually grown to enjoy it uh, throughout the you know this time period. But they wanted to come up with a new look and that's what they did. They gave it a, uh, a satin finish black top. And I know there was a lot of people online uh, when this was kind of rumored to be true. They were kind of like, I don't know about that. Well, black I paint. top has been around for a while. Hey, black top in guitars and mandolins is kind of a thing. Yeah, it is. So we got them in here. I think the biggest concern that I kept hearing was, is it going to affect the sound? I'm going to go ahead and start out this video by saying no, it does not. Yeah, if you tuned into the video to find that answer out, you can stop now. <laughs> no, it, it is a very fine finish that they just, uh, probably not much thicker than what they would have used normally. They just no. uh, they just added the black to the, the finish. Yeah. And they made it a satin. Um, I'm looking forward to when they do the red top, which would be the R2-D2. R2-E2? R2-E2. R2 that's not even funny. I think that's the most ridiculous joke you have ever done. Anyway, <laughs> these are great guitars. Uh, the Cedar Top has been something that I I have actually enjoyed a lot, especially on the OM. But now playing this Dread, I actually like it uh, a lot here too. Super depth and extra warmth, and has become a really popular. Like I said, I they just wanted a different look to them, so that kind of gave us the black tops. I think it's a, a segment of the market that has been talked about for a long time, especially in this under $800 price point, yeah. to have something that has a different look. The all black look has been around. It's super cool. I mean, if you're going to do your Johnny Cash song, you have to have and some of the old a Delta Blues top. players. They always had those black top guitars. Yeah, and rock and roll. It's not rock and roll unless you got a black top. It's it's just that's just the way it is. So. So I'll kind of go through the specs here just a little bit uh, so you know. This is a guitar that prices out at $579 as of when we film this, uh, which is super affordable. It does come in a Dreadnought and an OM form as the E2 OM or E2D. But you can find this as an alternative guitar if you're looking for a grand auditorium as an AC122-2. BK. Good memory. Uh, that would get you a pickup and a cutaway. And a hard uh, and a, case uh, as well, right? No, it'll still be, it'll still be the gig bag. Oh. So same guitar, just in a grand auditorium cutaway with pickup. Uh, as far as tone woods, we're dealing with a cedar, solid cedar uh, top, and a solid sapele back and sides. The neck is mahogany uh, with an ebony head plate and an ebony... Uh, uh, fretboard, fretboard, which is really good, as well as the bridge. Um, it does have tortoise binding, which I think really looks attractive on this black uh, against it, so it has a little bit of a contrast to it. Um, along with that, you will have your dual acting truss rod, bone nut and saddle, as is standard with most all Eastmans. We're really uh, glad to keep seeing that. Now, in this case, you're going to see the open geared uh, tuners on this. I think the 122 will give you your sealed tuners, but we do like the Pingwell tuners. Um, and honestly, even though they're a very affordable tuner, I've not had very many issues with these tuners no, at all. So, so yeah, really, really good. It is a uh, x brace guitar that has been hand scalloped uh, and voiced, so that is really, really great. It does have a satin finish, true tone finish on the front, and it's uh, it's the same finish on the back too. But they do the open pour uh, design, which means they don't use pour filler or wood filler to fill those little pores. So you'll see that, and that you also see the grain a lot. That also kind of helps make it much more affordable because yeah. they're not spending all that time a few to hours level. less time. And, and there's people that argue it sounds better anyway. So that's really good too. Uh, it does come with a gig bag, which is a really, really nice one. In this case, it's going to be their uh, kind of upgraded bag from the PCH series. So it is the black gig bags, a little bit sturdier, a little bit thicker foam. Uh, it does have a C-shaped neck, which is really comfortable. And I've noticed on all of these- C's for one, comfort. And two series, yeah, that's what it's. That's not what it gets asked for. Um, they do a very low profile, a very comfortable one uh, in an inch and three quarter nut width. 
uh, which has also kind of become a standard. Now, as far as radius, it is a 12 inch radius. Again, standard for almost every one of these uh, Eastman guitars. guitars. Yeah, Eastman guitars. Uh, so Eastman has become 12 inch radius standard. Uh, scale length, the Dreadnought is going to be a 24, 25 and a half, but uh, the OM is actually going to be a short scale uh, at 24 that was and my nickname 7, in high school. 24, 8, I believe. So that will give you a little bit shorter scale length, uh, make it a little bit comfortable. It's, there's an argument that goes around, I know we covered this before, Eastman's OM, a little bit different than um, some of the other ones. It's more like Martin's Triple O as a short scale, OM usually is a long scale, but they do this hybrid whatever. It doesn't matter. It's like a compact car. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> how, do you, how do you designate what's compact? Yeah, so there you go. Uh, uh, those are your details for specs. Here's the deal, guys. I think it is a fantastic guitar, and this is the first time I played the new Black Tops right before we started playing. I'm a big fan. Um, one thing that's kind of been uh, happening a lot, I think, in our world has been this um, Eastman's kind of tightened up and gone more towards that boutique sound, kind of tightening up the sound a little bit, not quite as big bottom, not quite as boomy as like the Martin sound that has been around forever. And that that's might be kind said, of a, a direct result from working with Dana Bourgeois a little it, bit and taking some of his techniques. Yeah, it makes absolute sense. That said, this guitar right here, if you're wanting a Dreadnought with big low end and a rich, sweet, kind of uh, overarching, boomy kind of low end, this guitar has it. I'm really surprised. Yeah, especially for five seventy nine. You know, that's hard to find a guitar with that much boom and, and bottom end because that's normally the thing that seems to be lacking. I think it's because a lot of times in that price range with bracing, they're just putting thick braces on there and just see and seeing the braces sure. and you don't really get as much out of the guitar but these are definitely hand voiced definitely got an overall arching tone now i will say that that all that said with the cedar top i think we are getting a little bit softer tone so if you're looking for that power bite the e1 is probably a little bit more for you because it's got a little bit more uh of that attack so when i hit it hard with a pick it doesn't quite kind of compress and soften up a little bit. Um, what's your thoughts on the OM? I, I like the, like you said, the tone has just got, got a real warmth to it, which maybe is more important in a guitar this this size. I absolutely agree with that. Uh, it, the E2 has become one of my favorite affordable OM size guitars because it has so much depth and warmth there uh, that just kind of gives it. So, I would say both of these guitars uh, would really fit in for somebody who's marking, looking for a guitar under the $800 to $1,000 price range. This puts it way under that mark. Yeah. And I think you're going to have a hard time finding a guitar for that intermediate level, all solid wood uh, guitar, you know, for a player who experienced enough that really wants a, a better quality guitar, or even if you're just a beginner that wants to have something that really, really stands out at an affordable price point. That's what this guitar really leans for. Plus, it's got cool factor. It's, got it's black. Look, yeah. So, if you didn't want that guitar that everyone else in the jam session has, I would say if you're going to play with others and you need a really projecting guitar, if you've got a lot of competition and noise, this probably isn't going to be as good. But if you've got a, a, what we just did with the Eagles, if you've got a jam session that's more of that quiet, strummy, soft singing, I think sure. that cedar top is a great. Selection. I also think the OM, uh, amazing choice for a finger picking guitar because it's got tons of attack. Um, so listen. Yet. Perfect, Jerry. I'm glad we had you to not be able to do that. <laughs> I thought just having this guitar was going to work. But. No, it didn't work very well. Um, downsides of this instrument, um, you know, if you're not a fan of the black uh, top, obviously that's not going to be something for you. Um, I would look elsewhere. You will definitely see, this is like cars, you will see marks and scratches and that kind of stuff much easier on a black top finish. That's been kind of a uh, pretty standard thing out there. Um, how does it compare? I, the biggest thing that I would compare this guitar to would be the E1s. Um, the, and that they're a spruce top, exactly same build in a spruce top. Again, if I'm looking for more punch, volume, and bite, especially in the high end, it's an E1 uh, for me. But if I want something a little bit more mellow, a little bit more bottom end heavy, I really like these a lot. Yeah. I would so. agree with that. Yeah, a downside would be if you do have to compete with a loud volume. I don't think they have as much, and that could not necessarily volume, but just like you said, that that higher end that just really cuts across in your ears. 
I think a, a spruce top's going to give you a little bit more of that punch. So if you need to compete, that would be a downside to this. If you're sure. just playing by yourself or a, a singer-songwriter, these are great accompaniment to your voice, I think. Yeah, I, I would absolutely agree with that. So let's get on to our ratings here, Jer. Uh, we'll start with tone on a scale of one to five. Where are you at right now? Am I giving an overall on the two guitars or the one I'm playing? I think you could do either okay. or, both of them. I, I we'll, think they we'll both. do a blended score. Yeah, sure, why not? Um, overall tone, I think it's got a really warm, uh, s smooth tone to it. And like I said, these are brand new. We just got these yeah. in, so they're going to open up a bunch too. And also, we're comparing this to instruments in, in this, this price, price range, range yep. under the $1,000 price point. I'd say I'm more used as a bluegrass player to a little bit more punch and drive. So I'll probably rate this a little lower on my own personal thing. So I'd say about a three and a half, four. Okay. I'm actually going to go... I'm going to go with four to make that easier for the guy doing the editing. There you go. I'm going to actually go with a four and a half, and I'm going to tell you why. I... When playing this guitar, I know this has been a thing that in this price point, a lot of people are looking for that big, you know, rich, super thick sound. And it's hard to find that ear. I, the biggest complaint I always hear is that guitars in this price point sound thin and tinny. Mm -hmm. And I definitely don't find that to be the case here. So in that mark, and I'd say that's the same with the OM yeah. as well, I'm going to give it a four and a half uh, because of that. Uh, setup and playability. Again, these uh, go through the Pomona shop. Um, you know, yeah, I in find this it, price range, when we did a review of those top videos or top guitars on the internet, Setup is such a difficult thing to get in this price range because that's where they cut corners. Is just slap a, a saddle on there and, and neck reset or neck sets aren't quite right. So actually, it could be all over the place. But Eastman's when we get them in, and I think that's that that quality control or the setup they do in Pomona sure. are very consistent. I would get this one a four and a half. Good. I'm gonna go with a four as well. So uh, build quality overall. Again, there's a couple things that uh, I noticed on this. To be honest. There was kind of some, uh, a little bit of overspray on, uh, I don't see it on this one, but I know I looked at, uh, maybe it's that one on the inside. Uh, those are little details, so I can't quite give it a five, but I would definitely give this a four. I mean, the build structure is great. There's a couple mm. little details that uh, I think were missed, but again, And that might be on the next category when we're talking about the looks. Yeah. But overall build quality, I, I would definitely say this is a four. Um, they're not putting as much time and effort into this as, as they are. So the higher models, obviously, to keep price down. But in general, in its compared to other ones in its place, uh, same price point, it's a easy four, four and a half. There you go. As far as the looks, uh, what is your opinion on this? That's what I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm not the black guitar person. I, I get it. I know exactly what people are looking for when they need a uh, black top guitar, uh, but it's not for me. So because of that. It's just a four for me. I can't go five. Yeah, I I like the black top. I think I've, I was used to some mandolins that had that same thing. I do like the satin finish on it. It looks very uh, appealing, sexy to me. Um, I will say some of the things I did notice, like around the rosette there, some of the black stain got in onto this light wood that they use on the rosette. And so uh, a few knocks there on points for appearance. I'm going to put it at a three and a half on that. Yeah, it's tough because in this category, it's still very well done. Yeah, so. It's I'll put that. I'll bump that up to a four. Okay. But it's compared to some of their higher quality ones, you know, they did let some things slide on it. So I'll give that a four. Again, we uh, always talk about our shop sustainable mission. Uh, as of we know, uh, for Eastman, uh, this kind of does fall into our shop sustainable. We know that Eastman's really good at sourcing their woods. It's mostly from the same exact suppliers as the upper end ones, and they have made a major effort, including their finish now switching to that true tone, uh, to do a much better job at being environmental, uh, mentally friendly, and not using uh, clear cut woods. So uh, definitely falls in our shop sustainable so that brings us to our last category overall value jer where are you at i think eastman knocks it out of the park in this price point there there really isn't much competition no. out there that competes and we 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 look for them all the time i'd love to sell any other manufacturer out there that can put out a high quality instrument at an affordable price um eastman's really dialed into that and doing a great job so i would give this a five I, value. I'm going to go with that. I, I don't usually just jump into fives. I would give this a six if we had a six, Jerry. I really do. $579 for an all solid wood guitar that plays and sings warranty, like this. You know, nut and saddle. It's, that's pretty awesome. Hand voiced. Yeah. yeah. There's not a whole lot of things that I can come up with a complaint for it. So my overall value at that price point, 
there's nothing that I personally know of right now that I would scale I think any higher important, than that. that's an important distinction is we're saying at this price point. It's interesting sometimes on the internet, the standard has been set so high that we'll mail a guitar out that's a sub $600 guitar and there'll be one small blemish, like I said, with that little bleed over on the finish there. And they're like, ah, I gotta send this guitar back. It, it's not, it doesn't look like the, the $4,000 Martin that I saw in the store. You, there's trade-offs. If you're going to have the price <laughs> point is. that you're wanting, it there can't be. They can't spend the amount of time. And Dana's talked about how much time they'll spend at Bourgeois on building guitar. They're allowed to spend that because it's a boutique guitar and it has to be perfect. Yeah. At this price range, you can't spend that much time. So small things will slip through the cracks. There, like I see on yours right now, there's a little buffing, <gasps> buffing compound oh right my next to the goodness. neck joint there. Jared. Small things can be cleaned up, but <laughs> again, set your expectations realistic in this price yeah. range. I fixed it. Don't worry. See, it's, it's fixed. that's all it took. <laughs> anyway, what we're going to do right now is uh, kind of get you uh, a little bit of a tone sample of these. So we're going to get you a little bit so you can hear exactly what these two guitars sound like. And uh, yeah, enjoy. So there you have it, Jer. Another, Another uh, sneak peek guitar yeah, review. Sure enough. These are actually officially uh, available for you. You will see some of these guitars available that showed up the first iteration with a tortoiseshell pickguard. But this is going to be the final uh, version of it with the black pickguards. So uh, yeah, check it out. And if you like this video, there's another one that I'd highly recommend that we did of another great new guitar that I love a lot. In the E1 series, they brought out the E1 SS Sunburst. So they did a it's double cool O and a Dreadnought. Really cool looking, really great sound. And you can check out that link right here and uh, check out that video because I think it's a really, really good one. And thank you guys so much. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you on the next video.